Hello everyone and uh, welcome to my channel. In the next few videos, I'm going to show you and talk about what you need to know when starting for the first time with Fusion 360. It doesn't matter if you are new to 3D modeling world or not. And especially if you're not and you're, and you're coming from another CAD software. I'm saying that because it could be an advantage or disadvantage in some situations. Now, the disadvantage side of if you already have an experience with other CAD software, it's quite simple. I have seen many people that are trying to do things in Fusion 360 the same way they did with their previous CAD software. And guess what happened? It didn't work out quite well as they expected. Things started to go wrong very quickly. So the first instinct is to blame Fusion 360. They think if the software looks the same, then it should also work the same. And by work, I mean workflow and tools behavior. And that is a big mistake. I will give you the basic information. Uh, I will try to cover everything uh, that I can in that sh uh, uh, short of time that I have that will help you to start working with Fusion 360 and will save you a lot of time and frustration. And if you will listen carefully and follow those basic uh, rules, you will have a lot of fun working with Fusion 360. Okay, let's start. So the first things you, uh, time you start uh, Fusion 360, you're gonna need to log in with your AD account. So if you don't have one, then do it. Um, and because you're gonna need it uh, almost everywhere, also in the forum and uh, so on. Uh, the first obvious difference between Fusion 360 and the other CAD software is that it's a cloud-based software, meaning your data is stored in the cloud and not on your computer. With that said, you also have cache folder and files sto stored uh, locally in your computer. And they are there so you could work offline if needed. Now, um, you can go to the, your preferences here and you can see here offline cache time period dates and it's gonna be kept for 60 days. Now, if you wanna know more about the offline, um, you can go into the, uh, I'm gonna attach a link to this uh, site here where they're explaining uh, how you can uh, use the offline mode and the different rules and uh, so on. Um, because you should note that um, you can work offline up to a period of two weeks if needed. After this Fusion 360 will uh, need to sync back online so that you can stay on the latest soft, uh, version. So uh, this is something that you have to bear in uh, mind, okay? So, but don't worry, I'm gonna attach a link to this uh, site here. Okay, uh, the data panel. So the first thing you're gonna see here in the left, this is the data panel here. Here we're gonna create a new project and inside the project you, you're gonna store your files and the folders and uh, yeah, and everything. And um, before, now when you working with Fusion, if you have, for example, an external uh, file that you have downloaded from, from somewhere and um, it's F3D extension. So the first thing you're gonna have to do is to uh, go into the project that you're gonna create and then you're going to need to upload it. If you can see here the uh, upload icon, the little cloud here, you're gonna select it uh, and you're gonna look for the file where you stored it and then you're gonna put the, uh, choose the location where do you wanna store it under which folder or project and so on, and you're gonna click upload. And when it's done, you're gonna see it here. And if not, it, there's a little pop-up here, it's gonna show up, uh, gonna ask you to uh, sync, to refresh. Um, so as I said, the data panel is very simple. Here you will start by creating your project folders and inside the project folder you will store your project file and add more folders. Uh, but do yourself a favor and keep your data uh, organized. As you can see here, you know, I created, for example, a test project and inside the text project I have the files and I have some other folders here as well. Okay, so it's very nice and neat. Um, now, <clears throat> what else I can talk about this uh, data panel? Yeah, now, uh, 
if you want to delete, for example, something, um, for example, a file in a folder, it's very easy. You just right click and delete. You can also, you can see, you can also rename. And the file itself, you can open, search the current design. You can do, for example, drawing from this. And you can also start live a review. It's actually pretty cool. I tried it and um, share with someone and um, you can rename and again you can also delete it from here i'm saying that because when you if you want to delete a project it's a bit different first you're gonna have to archive the project when you're archiving the project then you're gonna you're gonna go to your a360 account your cloud account by clicking on your name here and you it's gonna take you over here okay and then you're gonna go to your uh, here is all your project and files everything has been stored okay and this is your uh, cloud account here and um so if i go to all accounts you can see here my test projects it's also here okay so with all the files and everything so then you go to the archive and then you're gonna see it from here and then you're gonna be able to delete it okay so the archive uh, so the sorry the project folder you delete them from the archive you cannot delete them straight away so bear in mind if you you know trying to figure out hey what's going on where's the delete and everything if you for example by mistake created a, um, a project or maybe you reorganize everything so and you have some empty uh, project so this is how you delete them now um, the next step uh, as i said also before i show you here the preferences um it's a good advice i uh, just go in and uh, you know check all the different uh, options that you have here for example you have the default modeling orientation i for example set mine into this is the default it's to the y up some people prefer it to the z up so it's up to you now the zoom for example pan and orbit it's fusion if you're coming from alias or inventor or solid work you can change it so it's going to work like the uh, the previous uh, CAD software that you used to. And um, yeah, you can also have also this uh, reverse zoom. So it's pretty cool. And there are many other uh, different uh, options here. So go through them. And um, yeah, and change the thing that you need to change. If not, just keep it as it is. And that's what I did. And on the, the preview here, uh, go in and you know check this one sketch color sketch geometry based on constrained status when your sketch is will be uh, fully constrained then you're going to be able to uh, um, you know uh, it's, it's going to turn into black so you can see that it's fully constrained okay um, and then you have all different kind you know uh, project that they're working on uh, so if you want you can test them from here for example this live view collaboration support you can see what it does and you can test this and you have also the mesh workspace you need to turn it on in order to um, to work with the mesh for example uh, here you have also again the simulation it's something new they just added not so long time ago um, so if you want to do you want to test this kind of uh, simulation options so uh, just turn it on uh, apply ok and you're going to be able to to work with it but go inside and see uh, the different, uh, yeah, the different options, what it does and, and so on. Familiarize yourself with this, okay? You can see here the simulation, the units, for example, you can change them from here. So we are now we're starting with the um, sketching. Now, um, the, the fusion, fusion actually built very uh, logically. Uh, first of all, you know, you're starting with the sketches. After you finish the sketch, then you're going to create the, the body, the model, you know. So you have, for example, the extrude and everything, and then we're doing the modification, and then we have the, the, the joining, okay? So um, so it's, it's, it kind of actually makes really sense the way they design it over here. And it's very easy also to add links to the top if you want. You can see, uh, for example, um, I'm not in the sketch, but you can see here because the revolve already had in the top so that's why i have the x the x here if i want to swipe it's a tool that i'm using quite often so i use this arrow and it's gonna show up in, in, in uh, for example the loft you see it's come over here 
if I don't want it, I can just uh, reset panel or remove from the panel bar, okay? So it's removed. Um, so it's very flexible, you can customize it the way you want. And there is actually another really great uh, tip here. If you're clicking on the S, for example, and the key uh, and the keyboard, you can see here you have this model toolbar. Here you can also again customize it with all the tools that you need. And it's pretty cool because um, it doesn't matter where you are, you know, it shows up depends on where your mouse is. So you don't really have it. So you don't have to go all the way up and look for the tools that you want, you know. So it's going to be right, you know, on your tip and your fingers. So if, for example, you're around here, see, it shows up here and then you can choose the tool that you want. And again, you can just search for it. And uh, I don't know, for example, this fillet, you can uh, put it up to, to add it to the box. And you can also change the position and, and everything and it's going to be there. OK, so it's actually a very neat feature here so you can use. And um, yep. Okay, what else? Now, but before you're planning, you know, um, every, you know, design or modeling and everything, it starts with an idea or a vision in our mind. And uh, we want to turn this vision into a 3D model. Um, it would be a really good practice to prepare yourself uh, where do you want to start and what comes next. For example, which uh, part you're gonna work on first and what's gonna be the next one. It will save you a lot of time and the need to delete a sketch or a component and redo everything again. The sequence you are you're going to build the model is in many cases the same sequence you would use to assemble the model in real life. And a side note, I've seen it many times and it's, um, I don't know, it's, it's, it's really kind of annoying to me, but uh, when people uh, sketching, it doesn't matter which plane here, I always start for example, uh, with the first sketch right here in the middle, in the center of the coordinate, the zero, zero, okay? Uh, for me, it's almost like center of gravity in, in, in my brain. So I, I always sketch here. I never, for example, do a um, rectangle, for example, like this, okay? It just, for me personally, doesn't make any sense. And um, so I always like to work with the first one here in the center. And the referencing also many times is using the center as a referencing um, for, for dimension and so on. So that's going to be a really good tip for you to also do that. I, I've seen a lot of crazy stuff and I see people, you know, drawing in this side and it doesn't really make so much sense because when you are going out to the model here environment, you know, let's say you are going to extrude this one and you're going to want to turn, you know, uh, the model, it's turning fine, but look at the origin. It's right here, you know, it's, it just doesn't make so much sense. So try to really build it around the center. Uh, it will help you a lot in the future, trust me, uh, especially when you're doing um, a mirroring and if you're doing also, um, what else? Um, yeah, um, patterning, patterning and so on. And yeah, what else I can talk about is the strategy. So really, you know, take your time, uh, not too long time, of course, but uh, plan before you're going to um, uh, start the, the, the sketching and uh, the building the model. Next, it's, you probably heard it so many times and you will gonna heard it a lot, especially on the uh, Fusion 360 forum. Uh, it's at least once a day, me and I know the others, we are telling people about rule number one, okay? And we are a little bit tired of it, but we, are, we, we have to do it because this is really, really the basic of starting to work with Fusion 360. Rule number one basically says that every time, you know, you create a new, um, start a new part, okay? A component, it's a part, okay? Not everybody, you started with a new component. Remember that. And you make sure that the component is active. Okay? Now this component is active. The, this is the root component. Okay? And this is the component that we are going to design. And if you, when you're working on the component later, going back to a component, you're going to activate it because all the data is gonna be stored underneath. Uh, for example, like here, okay? I have this model, 
And you can see, only thing I have at the top, it's a joint. And underneath, you can see, I have the base. It's by its own, you know? So you have the bodies inside and I have the sketches. And you can also see the history. It's also gonna be kept underneath. So imagine you have like a hundred parts. And if you didn't do that, and you wanna, for example, edit this one, and you're not gonna have the history here. It's gonna be on the root or maybe somewhere else. And I've seen it many times. And it's really a mess if you want to uh, change something, uh, edit and go back in the, in the, in the in, in, you know, uh, with the timeline and everything. It's really, really a mess. So remember that every time you work on a part, you're gonna create a new component, okay? So I'm gonna expand a little bit more in the next part. And uh, I don't wanna make those videos too long. As I said, it's gonna be maybe two or three, maybe four even uh, short videos. Um, so not to video to you too much information so you're gonna fall asleep so um, I'm gonna stop here and uh, I'm gonna see you in the next video okay bye bye